What's up? What's up? It's DJ J Rock of the Power Jam DJs. Want to take a second and welcome y'all to the Industry Insider Show. Uh, we're about to get the show started. We're going to hop right to it. I'm going to bring on my panel. All right. Today we have Cool DJ Dre. Yes, sir. What's going on? Introduce yourself. Tell everybody about yourself. Cool DJ Dre. Uh, been a DJ over 35 plus years. Um, from the DMV. All right. DJ Ray, tell everybody about yourself. Hey, I'm DJ Rockin' Ray. I'm based in Staten Island, New York. I've been DJ. I'm a late boomer DJ. I always had a love for music. I have hobbies that are, uh, that are in electronics. I have an associate degree in audio and video servicing. I attended Scratch DJ Academy in New York City, and I enjoy doing what I'm doing. And if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't pay to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I always say, I only I only do I only do work that I enjoy. So if if, if it's not something I enjoy, then I don't care how much you pay me. I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right, we're going to go ahead and get tonight's show started. Uh, if To the audience listening, if you have any questions, feel free to hit up the comment box down below. We'll try to get to your questions. At the end of the talk, we have an uh, uh, opportunity for questions and answers. All right, so for now, we're going to go ahead and hop into our agenda, to our agenda. And the first item on our agenda is event security. And from the aspect of uh, vendors, um, w what are some of the issues that, that you guys have seen or encountered in, in your in your in your area uh, with um, event security? Um, let, let me go. I take, I take that. Um, event security. Um, a lot, a lot of event security, you know, they mainly, you know, on the on the outside, you know, checking people that's coming inside the um, the venue. Um, then you have inside the venue, you have people, you have security on the inside, the venue, the inside the venue, you know, saying just making sure everything goes smooth. But um, when it comes to the DJ part of it. You know, they only protecting their people somewhat, but the DJ is 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 by himself. You know, I, I think I think uh, I think that need to change, really. You know, um, I think when you go um, to uh, a venue, you know, you should ask questions. You know, about security. I mean, are they just protecting? The parameter, the parameter of the club and the patrons. What, what about the DJ? Do I fall underneath the umbrella as well? All right, DJ Rock and Ray. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, I basically do like private events. I haven't done like club stuff. I've been doing like concentrating more on family oriented uh, gigs. So I really have nothing to add to that right now. All right, some of the we the Power Jam DJs, uh, we're what you call open format DJs, and so we we do weddings, we do corporate events, uh, family events. Um, occasionally, we will do a bar or uh, a lounge, so to speak. But as it relates to security, uh, some of the things we do. Uh, we, we always perform a site survey. Uh, we like to know ahead of time uh, what the emergency exits are, um, parking, um, the quickest way to exit a venue. Um, of course, we look at it from the low end perspective as well, but we like to just go scope it out and just make sure that in an emergency situation, not only can we you know, protect ourselves, but also uh, help direct the guests out, you know, because if it's, you know, uh, some emergency situation, 
you don't want people that's running around crazy. So at a minimum, you want to be able to take and 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 direct them um, to to a to a certain degree. Uh, DJ, be quiet. Thanks for joining us, partner. Uh, from the <coughs> the realm of event security, um, what what have you seen? What do what do you do? Well, to piggyback off of what uh, you said, you know, I think that, you know, a site survey is always great. Um, <clears throat> that uh, you'll, you'll find out a lot of things about a site survey that you wouldn't if you were just to show up. Um, <clears throat> one of the things in addition to a site survey that I typically do is that I always get a, a pull a business card uh, in addition to that site survey. And um, <clears throat> I... Uh, Check ahead with the um, the event managers. If you're dealing with a hotel, I've typically done uh, some corporate events and some social events as well. And dealing with in that area, one of the things that I found out was just always to just plan ahead and have an A, B, and C plan. Um, <clears throat> one of the first and foremost things that I think is always good is always never be at a gig by yourself. Um, even if you are, if, even however big it is, however small it is, you know, you always make sure that you want to just load up or unload and load up with a second person there. <clears throat> even if you don't think that you need it, you know, you might want to, if it's unfamiliar area, <clears throat> if you live in that city or if you live in that, 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 that rural area or suburb area and you go into an area that you haven't been familiar with, I would definitely advise to just take another person um, for load in and load out. Um, also, just check with the with the event manager just to make sure that if they have security on hand, that typically, you know, as a DJ, we're the first in the in the last out. Um, but you always want to make sure that you know, even though you're the last out, the safety is still key. Um, some people tend to some people tend to carry a firearm. <clears throat> um, typically, you know, I. I I try to not to have that happen, but you know, uh, as a gun owner, I, I do uh, I do uh, and, uh, carry. Um, I don't carry all the time, but it's only in those times. Uh, for instance, I live in Indianapolis. Should I go to Terre Haute or to Indiana State University or to Indiana University or to Gary, Indiana, someplace outside of my a thirty minute drive? And I typically take a firearm, and I definitely would take a second person if, they, if it was minimum, uh, at the very minimum. But uh, I think the speaking points that everybody said with the, uh, were absolutely great. Uh, also, one of the things that we um, talk about often is um, security as it relates to theft. Uh, what, what are some of the things that uh, you gentlemen do to protect your equipment from theft. Um, um, just like uh, Be Quiet was saying, you know, you always um, have a second person, you know, on hand with you. You know what I mean? Because as you're loading up and breaking down, you always supposed to have somebody there, you know, to watch your gear while you're making, you know, the transition from your 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 the venue to your vehicle, you know what I mean? Um, and vice versa, you know what I'm saying? And that that kind of helps out, you know. Um, when you come back, then you when you come back, then that person go, you know what I mean? Um, never leave your equipment alone, you know, never leave it alone. Um, here, here, like I say, here in the DMV, it's been a lot of theft, you know, um, uh, a, a gentleman, a DJ a while back, um, got his laptop just taken right off the mount, right, right off the, <laughs> the platform, you know. So it's, wow, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. So you know, always have you know one or two people with you. You know what I mean when you when you're doing that. Um, that that goes along with security as well. You know what I mean um, because you have some events. You know, at the end when they clear the venue, whatever, they still conjugate around the area, 
you know what I'm saying? So you got to be mindful, you know, they've been drinking and, you know, having fun, doing whatever, but they can get irate with it. So you, you, you have to stay focused and, 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 and mindful that what's going on and because you want to leave out of that place um, safe. You know, you want to leave out of safe and you want to have all of your equipment intact as well. It makes sense. What, one thing that we do w- when we are at the end of the night, we don't take stuff out, then um, come down and go back in and unhook some more stuff and then take it out. What we tend to do is disconnect everything and stage it right back in the middle in front of us. And we load everything up and take it out at one time. And and we found that that limits the, the number of opportunities that there are for theft during that load out process. And, and the same for load in. You know, we get the stuff in, we stage it, then we um, assemble. At the end of the night, we disassemble, pack it in the cases, and then wheel everything out in as few trips as possible. And also, in having the extra staff, the extra set of eyes always help. And the, the next part of that is, after the gig is over, it's the end, end of the night, uh, we never stop and get gas leaving an event. Because you know, we've heard of situations where um, they follow the person to the gas station and rob them. <laughs> You know, it took their whole truck and trailer. You know, that, that has happened um, to, you know, uh, one of the, of the stories we've heard. And so we, we gas up beforehand. At the end of the night, everything is loaded. We're in, the, we're in the truck and we're leaving. We never drive directly to the storage unit. We always, always take a different scenic route back to the storage unit. Then once we get to the storage unit, unload everything, then go home. It's like, it's just, I, I don't care how tired we are at the end of the night, we hit that storage unit and unload the car. Because how many posts have you seen with, oh, somebody stole my mixer, somebody stole my controller, they broke in my car, they took my laptop and my hard drives, I need music for a gig tonight. You know, it, it happens. And so, but going into 2017, I, I don't advise anybody to leave gear in their truck or car overnight. If anybody in the studio audience have any suggestions, any want to chime in on the conversation, feel free to hit up the comment box. I want to take a second to shout out some of our um, viewers. Shout out to DJ Burnout, representing that good Richmond VA. Shout out to DJ Big Time Beats. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. All right, we're going to take uh, take a second to shout out our sponsor. Then we'll be right back with the next topic. We're back. Our next topic, we're going to talk a little about deposits and fees for services. Um, I know that's one of the, the hot topics going around in the different groups and forums is how much should I charge for this type of event? Should I collect a deposit? Uh, how much should it, what, what's a fair deposit? Should it be 50%? Should it be 20%? Do I even charge a deposit? You know, some people don't like deposits. They just want all their money the night of. 
Um, DJ Rock and Ray, what works for you? What has worked for you? Oh, I think it helps to turn on your mute. To mute yourself. <laughs> First of all. Uh, let's put it this way. Still, I'm still learning a lot with this business. Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of like a novice on some things. So some things I'm learning as well. It's a, it's, I gotta say that it's a never ending learning situation when you start out. Um, let's see, like I was telling you off camera, I had a situation where I want, which guy responded, somebody requested, uh, a charity requested for a DJ, either for low cost or, uh, or a donation. So what happened was, is that, okay, so I'm, I'm getting my feet out there. So I figured, okay, I'm going to do it as a donation. So I could get my feet out there and get known to people. You know, like that's what I'm trying to do. Sometimes you gotta pull yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to speak. Uh, and the other thing, and this is what happened to me like a couple of years and now I'm starting to ask for deposits on even if I volunteered to donate services. I want a con I want a deposit. I think you have to take a deposit no matter what. When I first started this, when I first started getting gigs and getting a few gigs here and there, I never took the deposits. Then I then things happened like, oh, I changed my mind. I'm going to go with this DJ now. I'm going to go with that DJ. And that's what happened to me on a donation is that, let's say they, like I explained to you before off camera, like they're looking for power, Jimmy J. Rock, a power jams DJ. But they can't get in touch with you. Either you're too busy or un unavailable to take a phone call. So they call me up. So I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll give them the price. And then as soon as Power Jam's DJ returns the call, then, then I'm out of the picture because they got the DJ that they didn't want. But they, they got to go to me because they figured, okay, if they can't get the DJ that they want, they got DJ to do something, so they got the covered. Yeah. So that's when I started getting. That's when I started uh, thinking about, especially thinking about deposits. Now, one uh, one of the things that, one of the things that I go over with my clients now is that a spot has to be available for me. You have to have electricity at the point. The area's got to be clean for me to perform. If I can't perform, regardless if it's free or you paying for it, I'm not going to perform because I don't feel my equipment is going to be safe there. Or I don't think my 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 what's called my equipment is going to be a clean clean there and safe or whatever. Or maybe it's a trip hazard. So therefore, I keep the deposit and say, you know what, you're not meeting the terms of the of the contract, so I can't perform. So I'm going to give you like 10 minutes to to make the adjustments, and I don't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to perform, and I'm going to keep your deposit. Because they're not making their stipulations as agreed. Exactly. Exactly. Cool, DJ Dre. Uh, what, what? How do you handle deposits and fees? Well, deposits. Um, I, I I have a story, but I'm not going to make it real long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I had this is making long. Um, I had a, um, a fashion show a few years ago, and um, it was a good good friend of mine, and they know I you know do things for them because we came from the neighborhood together. So, um, like, okay, I agree, you know, to do the, the fashion show. Well, it was no. Uh, contract. It was like a verbal agreement, right? So I was like, okay, well, I get to the venue, you know, set up and everything was setting up. And I was like, well, you said you was going to have half of my money when I set up and give me the other half when I'm finished, right? Well, it didn't happen that way. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it didn't happen that way. So then Flag came up. Okay, here comes the contract now. You know what I'm saying? Here comes demanding deposits. So from that point on, and then that's the way I went. Now, a lot of times the deposits, I think it's kind of like set for what what are you what you selling? You know, um, if you're selling up lighting and different things, and the price go up. So once the price go up, that deposit should rise. You know what I mean? Along with you selling. Um, um, for me, I just I'm just a DJ, so I don't have the the lights and all that. I'm getting into it, but I don't have that. So right now, I'm just at that one price. You know. Um, with the deposit stays at that same price. Now, when 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 the selling part come in, if you selling uh, lights, fog machines, videos, TVs, and I think whatever that price is, I think that that deposit should at least be twenty percent of that. Okay. And I, and I also think that the p- deposit. It's non refundable because once you lock that deposit, that's say, okay, you locking in this date and this DJ at this time, meaning that if you forfeit that, you don't get it back because that DJ could be doing something else. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, that's my take on that. All right, DJ, be quiet. What's your thoughts on the topic? Um, kind of going along with what Dre said, you know, I, I typically think that it's important. It's, it's, it's paramount that when you book an event and uh, the, uh, the, the type of event that you book is on a sliding scale with the deposit. <clears throat> if I'm just going to if I'm just going to go drop off a gobo, um, a gobo projector at somebody's event and all they need is just a gobo then I'm typically not going to be looking for some big deposit. It pretty much is going to be commensurate with the event itself. But if you're asking for you know, all the bells and tricks and the whistles, then definitely you're going to ask for a deposit. And along with what he said, you know, the, the deposit, uh, a good proportion or a good percentage of the deposit should be non-refundable. Um, as DJs, it is imperative that we, that, that we, hold ourselves to a certain standard. And that should be no different than a client itself. Um, if a client is serious about uh, booking an event, then they should be serious about paying for the, the quality of service that they're getting. Should be paying about, they should be absolutely positive about, or for sure about paying for the, the, um, the services that they're gonna receive, the experiences that, that they're looking for. And, um, getting exactly what they're looking for from that particular DJ or that audio or that technician, or they be a lighting or a video technician or whatever. So I think that, you know, uh, setting a deposit, uh, setting a deposit and, and more importantly, setting a, a non-refundable deposit pretty much puts the fire up under people, up under clients feet and let them, and allows them to, um, keep themselves, um, Accountable. I guess that's the basis. That's a good word. Yeah. Uh, on both sides, so that's a it's a win win for it's a it's a win win for the client because they get to lock in with that particular venue or that particular uh, DJ and or that particular let's just say service, um, and it's a win win because the the um, the vendor can um, be assured that at least they're being paid for their time and their value. Exactly. So uh, as far as, as far as deposits goes, I pretty much run a two and a half or two to three week deposit. Um, Typically the bigger the event, um, the bigger the event, the bigger the deposit, the earlier out I want it paid. If we're dealing in deposits, if we're dealing in excess of $200 and up, you know, um, we typically want the deposit, you know, or, or excuse me, the re- deposit and the remaining balance, because I'm not, 
pretty much worried about the deposit. Um, people are, are, are pretty spot on when it comes to deposit. It's after the deposit is paid and you receiving <laughs> the rest of the money is, is what uh, I typically, or we should, uh, we as DJs or people in the craft typically run into and holding these people accountable to what they're saying they're going to do as far as payment or non-payment. And I'm very firm when it comes to letting clients know, hey, well, look, we are a business like everyone else. We operate with different with the same standards as everyone else. If you do not pay, you know, then we have we have an ABC rule. Um, so I'm I'm I know that I'm not the only one in 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 this panel or out there listening in in the DJ world that have people to come and pay a deposit. I don't think that's the issue here. I think the issue is everything else afterwards, just to getting them to hold themselves accountable to paying off the rest of their that final payment. <laughs> Final payment, <laughs> right? <clears throat> um, yeah, what 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 uh, what DJ B Love and I typically do at Power Jam DJs is it, it depends on the service. For example, um, if it's a backyard cookout, you know we go on and we set up typically small gigs like that. You know, we just take the full balance because it's like you know it's a re relatively small amount. But for the the bigger setups, when we're doing up lighting and sound and DJ services, we are producing graphics form, you know, or, or what other low line fog or photo booths, what, what other whatever other services they want, you know, this is how we do deposits. Um, for the the larger packages, we'll give them the ability to do up to three payments. For the Manhattan package, you could do four payments. That's our most expensive package. But, you know, so that's at least 25% deposit. And the final payment is always due two weeks before the event. The reason why I say two weeks before the event, it cuts down on those situations where checks get lost in the mail. <laughs> you know, from anywhere in the country, it's not going to take two weeks for a letter to be delivered. But but right. al but also, you know, using electronic payment methods, that, that makes it much easier as well. You know what I'm saying? But, for both parties. Yeah. But, and, and just, but on the flip side of that, um, that's one of the reasons why we don't take a lot of last minute work. Um, since we started in 2013, the most problematic events that we've had as far as payment goes, all three of them were last minute events. And so we just found that last minute events, they be uh, issues with the payments or, 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 or what have you. So we, we try to steer clear of those. Um, but outside of that, you know, it's, the, the, the deposits does two things. It ensures the client that we're going to be there, and it ensures us that it's safe to block out that date. So it, it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Have any of you good folks ever run into an issue where you sent the contract with a client, let's say back in August or September, then the week of the event, the client said, hey, we're going to need you to buy tickets for you and your staff to get into the event. Have, have any of you ever run into that? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, well before, before we go there, before we go there, just let me say this. Um, what you're saying is great, but one of the things I think that um, a lot of clients tend to get used to is trying to pay on the day of. I, no DJ should never, ever take money or, or funds the day of before the event yeah the day of before the event but not during the event where a, where a client or a friend of the client comes up to you and gives you an, uh, uh, an envelope I think I think we lost them right, cool DJ Dre yeah yes sir um 
I, I had that happen to me uh, one time, but come to find out the reason why they did it that way, because they was unsure that they was going to have the funds to pay the, the <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, "Oh man, what you tell me? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a part. Of, I'm a part of your affair, but I have to pay fifty dollars for a ticket as well. Really? <laughs> yeah, because we didn't sell a lot of tickets, so you know, um, we try and make this money so we can pay everybody. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! See, and but." And I can understand that if, you know, it, I, I've seen some folks show up to an event that require two tops and, you know, bring 20 people. <laughs> so in, 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 in that in that situation, I, I understand that, um, you know, you might want to um, those extra people to pay. But far as staff actually working the event. You know, you know, we we only bring the necessary staff. For example, if it's the Manhattan package, that's a crew of four to five people. You know, that's your sound tech, that's your DJ, that's your event producer, that's your lighting person, and and in some cases, it'll be the photo booth attendant. So all of those people are accounted for. You know, so <laughs> it's not like uh, you're gonna show up with twenty people and show up to uh, a sweet 16 <laughs> you got seven people with you and you're coming in with two um, k10 speakers <laughs> wow that's that's <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy yeah so do we have any uh q a all right um, all right before before we move to the q a um, let's shout out our sponsor, then we'll come we'll come right back to the Q and A's. I, 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 we're back on the call. Um, th th thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, we're going to start our question and answering session. Uh, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comments. I'm going to bring the panel back on. All right, we're back on with our panel. Um, I'm, look I'm checking the comments now to see if there's any questions. Uh, what's up, Rudy? Thanks for tuning in. What's up, Rodney Smith? Thanks for tuning in. What's up, Rudy? Fish out. All right. I think we are, we don't have any questions, so I think we're at a good point where we can go ahead and wrap up the live stream. If I could get you good gentlemen to stay on the line, I will close yes, out the live stream. Yes, sir. Once again, thanks. Thank everybody for tuning into the Insider Network. We got a group on Facebook, Industry Insiders. Feel free to join that group. Uh, we're looking for positive, light-minded uh, lighting DJs, photographers, event planners, caterers, florists, even venue owners. And so, we're definitely looking to grow our group. And if you would like to be a special guest on the Industry Insider. Feel free to hit up my inbox, and um, we'll go from there. Once again, I'm DJ J Rock of the Power Jam DJs, and you've been tuned into the Industry Insider Show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>